Hey viewers and welcome to another educating and eye-opening episode of your favorite program, The Health Watch. Coming to you from ACNN TV and of course I am honored to be your uncle. I am Promise Njoku Adibe. And now today we'll be looking at vaccination. Okay, so vaccination stands as a cornerstone of modern medicine playing a pivotal role in safeguarding human health and preventing the spread of infectious diseases through the administration of vaccines individuals are empowered with immunity against a wide range of pathogens significantly reducing the risk of infection illness and even death okay so by harnessing the power of vaccination humanity has achieved remarkable triumphs in combating one's debilitating diseases such as you know them smallpox polio measles and others and also underscoring the indispensable value of vaccine in promoting public health now preventing pandemics and ultimately saving lives so viewers today will be looking at vaccination and its importance to human health and to educate us on the topic before us are two very great pharmacists i'm really honored you know to, to be in the same space with them and i have with me pharmacist mrs bridget Otsotse, uh, fpsn and she is the immediate past national vice chairman of the Association of Community Pharmacists of Nigeria, ACPN. It's good to have you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I, I, I must say, I must confess, I'm honored to be in the same space with you. Thank you. I feel honored too. <laughs> okay, I also have with me viewers, um, pharmacist Amade Enejo, um, DC Farm. He is the chairman of the Association of Community Pharmacists of Nigeria, ACPN, the FCT branch. It's good to have you come talk to us. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. I feel honored having two <laughs> great pharmacists on this show. <laughs> okay, viewers, you know how we do it. This is an educating episode. So let's talk to our guests let's start with the basics let me start with you uh, woman to woman okay yeah, sure. okay so <laughs> let me start with you so educate us more on this topic we're looking at the vaccines vaccination educate us on vaccination and maybe you can tell us at what age we should start taking vaccine or at what age people are expected to start taking vaccines okay thank you um vaccines or vaccination is a very essential part of preventive medicine and um, it helps in reducing the severity of an ailment or preventing infection that's transmission of the disease from one person to another so it becomes a very important part of our existence as humans because Infectious diseases is something that can wipe off the human race as mm. easy as possible, if not brought under control. And uh, there is no age, age limit to vaccination. Okay. Um, usually vaccines are given immediately after birth, depending on what country. The vaccine policy varies from country to country, like in Nigeria, Soon after birth, the BCG is administered to the baby. Okay. And in other countries, it takes a while, maybe three months before the administration of uh, BCG. So it depends on the prevalence of certain ailments in a particular region and then the vaccine policy in that uh, region. There is no age limit. There are childhood vaccines and there are adult uh, vaccines. And uh, vaccines are not necessarily administered to only sick persons. There are vaccines that you administer in view of mm. an expecting uh, disease, a disease or, infection. or infection to help, uh, of course, reduce the severity or the rate of transmission from person to person. 
Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to add more to that? Yeah. And then in, in adding to that, maybe you can tell us the various vaccines we have um, for human health. Well, uh, I think uh, in adding to that, uh, there's no age limit, like she said. Uh, every human being has, from time of birth can be given vaccine depending on what uh, uh, disease or uh, conditions you are trying to prevent. You know, basically the essence of vaccine is to prevent uh, diseases, especially when there's uh, a high level of uh, expectation that that disease may come to a particular community or individual. So there's no age limit as uh, the case may be. And uh, we have uh, the various uh, types of vaccines. We have uh, one that we call uh, attenuated, active one, and some that are inactive, depending on the disease conditions that uh, we determine which particular uh, vaccines that uh, you can uh, administer per time. So those are areas that uh, the science has brought to prevent uh, diseases using uh, vaccines. Okay, but, but now in Nigeria, uh, are there particular diseases that vaccines um, do take care of? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, can, can you just mention a little for us, please? Okay, so. uh, in Nigeria, for example, I think it's not even specific to Nigeria alone, world over. For example, uh, when we talk about uh, polio, for okay. example, uh, polio has been an endemic issue in the country and the Ministry of Health of this country have done a lot to eradicate it. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there's a routine vaccination for polio yeah. all over the country again and again. Sometimes uh, about two or three years ago, Nigeria was declared uh, polio free. Yeah. But after a while, there was a resurface somewhere again, and you have to reintroduce it. So the essence is to, one, prevent and reduce the spread of uh, those such uh, diseases. We know what uh, polio does to, from uh, childhood, even before they reach uh, adulthood. And then we talk about uh, COVID came in mm -hmm. again. COVID was more or less a world over diseases that came and the vaccine was what helped to curtail that uh, disease. We know the mortality rate that was recorded in the course of uh, the time that the COVID uh, lasted, but it's the vaccine that helped to curb that situation. So there are many types of uh, situations like that that uh, vaccines help to cope the disease in a particular country. So Nigeria is not uh, an, exception. an exception. But then we have some peculiar cases. Yes. <laughs> like Nigeria. I know malaria is, is actually very peculiar mm. to yeah. the Africans. Yeah. Yeah. We have the yellow fever, okay. the tuberculosis, okay. typhoid, the HPV, that's the human Uma papilloma virus, virus. Um, for cervical cancer. Yeah. But, but then, are these vaccines available for Nigerians? Like, are they free or Nigerians have to pay to be able to assess them? Most of them are not free, but um, NPHCDA have been doing a lot of um, advocacy and um, also trying to see how these vaccines can be accessible to most Nigerians. Like the COVID vaccine was free. I think the Nigerian government did, yeah, the COVID, COVID vaccine was free. Okay. It was free, even when it was devolved to community pharmacies and we were supposed to charge some amount for logistics. As corporate social responsibility, the pharmacists decided that they were not going to charge the logistics and it was given for free also. So a lot of them are not free. But there are a good number too that can be assessed for free from government uh, agencies. Okay, okay, but then um, the fact that a lot of um, some of them are not free, don't you think um, that is one of the reasons why people don't go for these vaccines? Because of course people are looking for money to feed, mm. looking for money to pay school fees, looking for money to you know pay house rent, and then they can't afford 
you know, to go for these vaccines because they are not free. Do you think that is no, one of the reasons? I don't, I don't because think they... that is the main reason. Most of the reason why people are not going for uh, those vaccines are basically one act of uh, ignorance because they don't know some of this group of people don't know and appreciate what this vaccine does and like we always say prevention is better than the cure, cure. Mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. that is the main reason why vaccine was introduced to mm -hmm. prevent mm -hmm. you know the cost of a uh, treatment when there's a disease situation in every individual is always much more higher than the cost of the vaccine so it's because of lack of knowledge or uh, ignorance, ignorance mm. that actually makes people to think otherwise if not vaccine is the best way to go vaccine being the best way but we still have people who are educated who are, have not gone for those vaccines Maybe, well they keep telling you maybe they don't have the money and then all of that because i i know one of the government hospitals said they charge about ten thousand for mm, the first dose the, yeah. of uh yeah, hepatitis b Depends yes, on hepatitis B. Yes, type of uh, vaccine. Yeah, yes. But equally, the same hepatitis B. B. We have a lot of um, organizations going around to churches Church. and mosques and all that, giving Being hepatitis for B for free. Even in my church, for several years now, I'm a Roman Catholic. I attend twelve apostles. For several years now, we have organizations that come in to do hepatitis B for free. So it's not like my colleague put it. It's not all about affordability or not affordability. Um, I think our country needs to do a lot of advocacy and education. It's about priority. It's about appreciating what these vaccines are all about. You know, we like to wait until last, last minute. minute yeah. When we are healthy, we think ah, we are still on our feet. So it's not important. So we wait until it gets us down. So we have to continue to advocate, to educate our people, to let them know the importance, the significance of this vaccination. Like he put it too, prevention is better than cure. We build our homes and we put a burglary proof. We do not wait until the thief comes. True. And we are not expecting that the thief will come tomorrow. We are protecting against the arrival of that intruder. So it's the same way with vaccine. Mm -hmm. So we have to get our body the soldiers our immunity prepared to fight against the jams when they arrive so we have to continue in the line of advocacy and getting our people to accept it and dispel some of those unfortunate myths that get them thinking that oh if you take it this will happen to you that will happen to you that's why we have to continue engaging with the people okay. so as we continue to engage people we discover that some of them that were initially hesitating uh, administration of this they come by the time they got to know more about the importance of this vaccine you see them admitting to uh, yes. accept the vaccine so i think that is the only way out it's not because of the cost okay well viewers you had these two great pharmacists here they've said it all you don't have to wait until uh, um the soldiers in the system are you know gone down before you go for these vaccines and if you are asking on where to get these vaccines um uh, pharmacist bridget just pointed it out we have um uh, pharmacists, uh, different organizations going to churches, going to, you know, religious places. places. So try to find out from your religious um, uh, place, either a church or a mosque, please find out where uh, um, they will be or when they will come to your, your, your vicinity and ensure you get vaccinated. It cannot be overemphasized, the importance of taking vaccines. Just the few times, yeah. the few minutes we've talked about it now, uh, you know, it's eye-opening. Remember I told you this, eye-opening. So make sure you get vaccinated now mm -hmm. I, I want to ask um uh, um pharmacist there uh amade, amade yeah. would you say that um the vaccine distribution strategy in nigeria in particular is yielding results great results yeah when you say great results i won't say that we are there yet okay. uh, but uh, the government of the day they are really doing a lot to see that there's a lot of uh, um, wide distribution of uh, vaccines. Most uh, primary health care centers being spearheaded by the National Primary Health Care Development Agencies make sure that vaccines are distributed to all the health centers as from even the state down to local government, even down to the world where we have them. And 
the maybe majorly the issues may be logistics mm. where that are the setbacks that we may have most of the time one something like uh, electricity you know but since you need to keep them at a condition that it will maintain its potency and when we are having such challenges like electricity at the rural area that is where you discover that some of this vaccine cannot be kept there the at that level they may need to go to the center where they can be stored properly so those are some of the logistics that are challenges but are the challenge that we may face but in rating generally I think the federal government and uh, being spearheaded by the National Primary Health Care uh, Development Agency are doing a lot to see that there's distribution and there's also people have access to those vaccines. Okay, okay. Um, he made mention of, you know, some of these challenges. Uh, let me come to you, uh, um, Fam Bridget. Don't you think the fact that the government is already, you know, putting this distribution process mm. in place, don't you think the government should also think, you know, ahead, knowing that, okay, X, Y, Z, rural places don't have light. So let's, you know, try to make sure we have electricity there to be able to give out these vaccines. I'm talking about this because um, I really want to know if, because I'm talking from my perspective as a journalist, mm. I want to hear from your perspective as a pharmacist, the people on the ground, because if you go up north, we have a lot of people who come down with so many diseases that would have been prevented with vaccines and sometimes when you talk to them it's either they tell you um, they don't have access to the vaccines or they also have their own peculiar challenges so now let's talk about the challenges you face in in your own uh, aspect in the health sector so would you say your distribution of vaccine is yielding results looking at the outcome in the north i'll go a little to the left and a little okay, to the go right ahead. <laughs> So, um, I have my personal opinion on one side, but if we want to know real time what the state of uh, um, coverage is in the country, I think we will need to work with data, okay. either from NCDC or from NPHCDA. So, whatever I'm going to say now will be based on um, my personal perception. Okay. So I can't have the real facts without getting those uh, data exactly. from NCDC or, uh, and the uh, NPHCD. So for the challenges in distribution, like my colleague tried to explain, it is real. It is real because we had full involvement in uh, that. When I say we, I mean the community pharmacists. We were fully involved at some point with the administration of COVID-19 vaccine. We continue referring to COVID-19 because we just had uh, the, experience. Uh, the experience not uh, too long ago. And uh, within a period of, of about six months, community pharmacists vaccinated nearly uh, close to 100,000 Nigerians. That's in six states mm. by our involvement. And what challenges did we face? logistics like he explained earlier there is the reverse logistics because of uh, storage you go pick the vaccines what is not utilized you need to return you know it costs money to transport mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. and backward mm -hmm. so those were challenges we faced but good enough we had support from international agencies like uh, mtaps who came to our aid and tried to give some logistic support at some point. So the storage was also an issue. The storage is part of the reason why we have to go backward and forward. Because if every outlet that was involved in the administration of the vaccine had the proper storage facility, there might have been no need to keep moving the vaccines backward and forward. So storage is a big problem. We know the issue of light, light problem in our yeah. country because vaccines are thermolabile products. So you need to maintain them within certain temperature to maintain the efficacy. So that is a big problem. And as community pharmacists, 
we also tried to see how we could think outside the box. So ACPM, in her wisdom, approached some uh, multinationals and we were able to go into partnership to import some freezers, vaccine freezers, storage freezers with data loggers to afford us the opportunity to efficiently and effectively partner with Nigerian government towards resolving part of the issue of vaccination in our country. So the pharmacists are thinking, we are thinking ahead. Okay. We, are, we are wanting to be involved. We are doing a lot towards giving our services, towards fighting uh, infectious diseases in our country. So we have brought in some of these freezers and we have uh, banks that are ready to also partner with us mm. to assist most of our members to get these um, freezers, not free, but um, a flexible the payment, payment uh, uh, method. Uh, so that we'll be able to keep the, not just uh, the COVID-19 in question, but even other rut routine uh, vaccines, vaccines. Okay. towards uh, fighting uh, infectious diseases in our country. So we have moved ahead and made all those uh, arrangements towards uh, assisting the Nigerian government okay. at our own level to add value to our primary healthcare system as far as infectious diseases are concerned. That is really, really highly commendable. You, you people are really doing a lot. You see, if we didn't bring you here, we wouldn't have yeah, really known correct. how far you people have gone. You people have really done a lot. I, I think that's uh, addressed the question you ask about what uh, are they doing to solve this problem of uh, at the rural area. Yeah. So with those kind of uh, refrigerator, you cannot be able to store those vaccines at the rural area where we don't have uh, sustained electricity. electricity. Yeah. Okay, so let and me come. Okay. Before we, I must also add that aside the um, um, refrigerators with uh, solar panels, we also have partnership with some banks to assist our colleagues also install uh, inverters with solar panels in their outlets. Wow. To, yeah, towards fighting the outage of uh, lights right. okay. that affects the credibility of some of these thermolabide products not just vaccines even some of the products the drugs we, mm. we 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 stock for consumption we, they also need to be maintained at certain temperatures so we have in recent years we as um, a body have worked towards improving the services we offer nigerian consumers as far as pharmaceuticals are concerned. Wow, that, that's kudos to you. And uh, mm. from all of us from ACN in here want to also appreciate these banks, you know, that have taken it upon themselves to um, support the pharmacists in doing this great work. We say thank you to you and to you all, we say thank you to thank for you this much. selfless work. Uh, but then more needs to be done, sure. really more needs to be done. Okay, so um, can you tell us how um, public policies and um, vaccine distribution strategies, you know, have impacted the success of vaccine vaccination programs. Can, can you make, can you talk about the FCT first, since you're the chairman of the FCT? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the public policy or government policies have actually uh, gone a long way to see that there is uh, mm -hmm. easy access to vaccines. Before now, community pharmacies were not involved in administration of vaccine. But when we had COVID, mm. the government policy changed. Now the community pharmacies were directly involved in administration of uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Okay. And that got us involved directly in administration of vaccines at community pharmacy level. You know, community pharmacies, they are in, uh, present in every community. In fact, we are the closest health professional to the community. In fact, they are the first point of call. And government, in its wisdom, brought in community pharmacy because we want easy access of these uh, vaccines. And that way, there was a lot of impact through the involvement of community pharmacies. And like uh, my immediate past uh, national vice chairman said, 
over almost about a hundred thousand of Nigeria got access to vaccine or got vaccinated with COVID-19 uh, vaccines. You can imagine that number not having access. Mm. That's a, a lot. You understand? So that policy of government where community pharmacies were now involved in administration of vaccine went a long way to give those community access to those uh, vaccines. And two, you know that because community pharmacies are centered in the community, the populace believe in them very well. Like we're talking about hesitancy. Mm, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely come to <laughs> that. Exactly. So when they come to the pharmacies at the community level, they confide in us, get educated by the community pharmacists, and that gives them more uh, trust in accepting these vaccines. So those policy of government where community pharmacists are now involved in vaccination went a long way to increase the access of these vaccines by the populace. And in FCT here, we almost all the all the local governments, the community pharmacy were involved in this vaccination. And that went a long way to give access to the FCT population to access these uh, vaccines in the course of that uh, administration of vaccines, uh, COVID-19 vaccines. So it's a, a welcome development. And we're looking forward that not just COVID vaccine, because COVID has come and gone. Mm -hmm. But some of you still, still see No, COVID of course. You know, we said vaccine is for prevention. Yeah. So it's not, the, 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 the prevalence has reduced, but that does not mean that uh, the vaccines are not still, uh, cannot still be taken. You understand? Okay. So it's, we are looking for that outside COVID-19 vaccines, other primary healthcare vaccines can also be uh, devolved down to the community pharmacy so that there will be easy access mm. of the populace. Okay. So that's we are looking for that government will uh, also bring it on board so that uh, the community or the populace can enjoy easy access. Oh, that's beautiful. I just hope that the government listens to yeah. To you uh okay viewers you, you've heard of uh, these two great pharmacists talk to us we'll be taking a short break now when we come back we have more questions for them and believe me you're going to get receive mind-blowing responses so don't go away we'll be back shortly there are standards in life mm -hmm. but the beauty of it is that we have the highest standard Lord, we decree upon this nation we decree peace upon Nigeria Receive illumination Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray any negative prophecy concerning your life is cancelled. Amen. Lord, we ask, oh God, for your healing. Cancer, we speak to you. Bow in the name of Jesus. Every siege, whatever battle, sicknesses and diseases, we pack and go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever that battle that comes your way this year, I pray you will dominate. Amen. I pray for you today. That situation will turn around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Showing every Thursdays at 6 p.m. West African time. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Health Watch on ACNN TV. And I am still promising Joko Adibe, your uncle. I, I still have these two great pharmacists with me. I keep calling them great. Believe me, they are great. I have a pharmacist, Bridget, and uh, I also have a pharmacist, uh, Amade. Both are awesome. Pharmacist Bridget uh, was the immediate past national vice chairman of the Association of Community Pharmacists of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> Pharmacist Amade is 
the chairman of the association of community pharmacists in nigeria the fct chapter so wow. thank you for still staying with us thank i you. hope we've not bored you <laughs> too, all, too much all. okay so we were talking before we went on break we were talking about you know vaccines you know and the importance of vaccines to human health now they've made a whole lot of you know eye-opening uh, um uh, uh, um statements they've you know educated us more and more than we've all we've known before so i just want to still ask you know we talked about the policies uh before we went on break so uh, let me come to um pharmacist bridget do we have um any challenges or potential risks that are associated with vaccine hesitancy and if we do how can that be addressed hmm. yeah Certainly, we have um, a lot of challenges and potential risk. Okay. That is the reason why we promote vaccination in the first place. And what are these challenges? Like we have heard, vaccination is a very important part of preventive health, mm -hmm. preventive medicine. We vaccinate to protect against infections. We vaccinate to protect against transmission of contagious diseases from one person to another. We vaccinate to improve our immune system, our natural immune system, towards fighting against those intruders called germs. Now, what happens when we are not vaccinated? When we are not vaccinated, we fall frequently ill. When we are not vaccinated, we get easily exposed to contagious diseases. And when I say easily exposed, when we are exposed to contagious diseases, we get infected easily because we are not vaccinated. When we are not vaccinated and we fall ill frequently because we are ill, we miss work, mm. we miss school. We are not able to go about our normal routine businesses. So we see the importance of vaccination in our lives cannot be overemphasized. When we are not vaccinated, it reduces what we call herd immunity in the society. Now, what is herd immunity? It is when a good percentage of the population is vaccinated such that they begin to confer immunity on that smaller percentage who have not been vaccinated either because of some health challenges that restricted them from being vaccinated or accessibility, maybe age or um, other restrictions. So um, importance of vaccination cannot be overemphasized because I have listed so many challenges we face mm. when we are not vaccinated. And I have also listed so many advantages to our getting vaccinated. It even affects us economically because when we don't go to work, we are losing economically. Yeah. <laughs> when we don't go to school, we are losing. So you cannot overemphasize the importance or even the challenges of vaccination. There, you can't you can't take one from another. But, but then, how can this be addressed? Effectively addressed? This, yes. This, this um, hesitancy. We can address uh, vaccine hesitancy by continuous advocacy and education. We can address it, the government can address it by being deliberate about policies. Like you jokingly suggested off camera a while ago. Mm -hmm. Can these people not be forced? And I laughed. Yeah. And I said there's something, you know, we are faced with the world of uh, um, our uh, rights, human rights. I mean... You cannot force, maybe a child can be forced, but an adult cannot be forced. A child can be forced by his parents, but you can't force an adult to get vaccinated. But, 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 but there could be government policies that enforce. Mm -hmm. For instance, I know in the time of COVID, there was at some point that they say, if you didn't have the COVID-19 yeah, card, exactly. you could not travel. Exactly. So a lot of people who desire to travel made sure they got vaccinated. True. So such government policies can influence or reduce hesitancy mm -hmm. we can also reduce hesitancy by continuous engagement with the people educating them getting them to trust us building that bond and trust like the community pharmacists are very good at that because we are the 
closest to the community. They are usually the first port of call when people get sick. So that friendship, that bond is usually already built between the patients and the pharmacist. So it becomes a lot easier for the community pharmacist to convince the patients. There are a lot of times when even patients go to the hospital and come to the pharmacist. I went to the hospital, this is what they give me. Uh, farm, go through it. Should I take it? No, they yeah. trust us yes. that yes. much. Yes. So it becomes very important for the community pharmacist to educate the clients. How about outreaches? Government policies can also influence and uh, promote outreaches where health professionals go to the people, go to them and um, educate them and also give them easier accessibility to these vaccines because some of them may not want to come because they don't want to travel all the distance to town or to where they can get access. But when you take it to them and you ad educate them, it breaks down that uh, barrier and then the hesitancy reduces. So yeah. to add to that is, uh, if you have said it all, but just to add some. Uh, some of this community, they believe so much in their community leaders. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And if their community leader could also go extra mile to invite the community and speak to them that this is safe. In most cases, some of them come with different mites that uh, to reduce their population, it makes mm -hmm. them not mm -hmm. to be fertile and all those things. By the time their community leader can speak to them and said, no, this is not true. It's just a might that they should disbelieve such might. It goes a long way. These people, some of these people believe so much in this community leader. And the same way, their church leaders, their imams, that's religious leaders now, can talk to them. Then, like uh, my uh, national vice chairman said, immediate past, the government can bring a policy or some uh, people like um, National Orientation Agency, they take it as a point of duty or deliberate about it to continue to speak to the people, the importance and the need for everybody to get this, uh, get vaccinated. It will go a long way for those that are doubting to now change their mind and begin to assess those uh, vaccines. Because if a larger population is not taking it. It's a big risk for those other population. Mm -hmm. You understand? So those are the challenges that are there. But if we are deliberate about it, discover that we can take care of. Uh, okay, but, but then in FCT, yeah. I, I'm looking at how we can, you know, address this mm -hmm. you know, effectively and swiftly. Yeah. In FCT, um, ha have you you know, as the chairman, yeah. you know, thought about meeting uh, any of the government yeah. agencies to say, oh, okay, for instance, in banks, we, we, we should have a policy. If you're not vaccinated of X, Y, Z, you will mm. not, you know, work in the bank. Because people cherish their jobs, they will want to, you know, take these vaccines. Or in, in other um, parasitals, we start with the government, you know, parasitals first. If you're not vaccinated, show us your proof of, you know, being vaccinated, you will not be able to assess your office. And then because people want to work, mm. they want to make money, they end up getting, don't you think that would be that been a better strategy? Yeah, that is a very good idea. But like we earlier mentioned off camera, this, this human, every human being has a right. The acceptability of this vaccine also is a right. Uh, even the, every individual has a right to accept the medicine you are giving him or her. You understand? So, but that notwithstanding, because we are saying that if you don't take it, you stand to be uh, cause a danger to other uh, mm -hmm. people. So, the government policy can come in a way, like uh, she mentioned earlier on. Uh, I remembered very well during COVID, it's not even vaccine. If you don't put up a face mask, exactly. you are not allowed to enter a particular premise. Exactly. So, in similar situation, we can government can bring a policy that, okay, before you go to so, so, so place, you must. But there will be definitely wide um, exactly. uh, um, orientation. orientation. So okay. that's what I'm saying. So okay. we have uh, anyway that there is a government agency that is supposed to educate Nigeria. So with that, I think it will go a long way to 
uh, cop those uh, and this challenges. May, this may sound funny, but in our country, there are some small reward systems mm. that also encourage the uptake of uh, those things. Mm. For instance, you go on an outreach and you have snacks and drinks mm. Mm. for people that come get vaccinated. You live with a bottle of water or coke and uh, snacks. You see more people queuing. True. So such small reward system even helps mm. towards encouraging people to get uh, vaccinated. At that point, they are only interested in hunger, not uh, whether <laughs> the vaccine is healthy or not. Is the truth? <laughs> Yeah, we, you had it during a uh, COVID vaccination, like she mentioned. We went to an, an outreach to a community. At the when we got started, people were not really coming out. But when some few individuals that comes out and they go home with one little gift or the other, you see that within uh, the next minutes, what uh, 20, 30 minutes, you start seeing influx. The crowd. Crowd Sometimes as so, little as paracetamol uh -huh. and warm medicine. We we're giving out for free for those who got vaccinated and that encouraged others and to come. Gone. When you are vaccinated, you go with a pack of maybe Zentel and a paracetamol, a sachet of paracetamol tablet. So for that free reward, you we found more people coming, coming to, to get accept. vaccinated. Okay, but, but do you have people who willingly, I'm talking about individuals, who willingly want to partner with you and say, oh, okay, um, for, for the snacks, like this reward thing mm. you talk about, okay, I'll give I'll give um reward to 100 people, and that person says, I'll give a reward to 50 people. So that makes it 150 people. Do you have individuals? I'm not talking of big organizations now. Do you have individuals who come to do that? Mm, I think uh, I, we're making reference to COVID uh, vaccination because it was a practical thing that we mm. did. Some of us, the community pharmacies, like she mentioned earlier, in the course of this uh, vaccination, the federal government uh told us that we should charge a fee for the logistics but community pharmacists in their own uh, social responsibility decided not to charge any well, individual to you. so we gave them for free so it was more or less a service to the community and sometime when we've discovered that even at the premises many people were not uh, coming we decided to create a public uh, outreach that is health outreach. We go outside and we we'll put ourselves together with our on the cost on us. Mm. Prepare uh, those uh, gifts. Mm. Paracetamol. Paracetamol. Sometimes we we'll take go with blood snacks, tonic. Blood tonic on at our cost to reach out to the populace. So those things were done at our own uh, cost, and it's more or less like uh, we uh, give back time. Okay, but, the but then we have some individuals who might want to, you know, sure. uh, you know, support sure. this cause, this very good cause you people are doing yeah. now. How do they reach you? Because um, this is a platform to say, okay, yeah. if you want to reach us to support, maybe you want to pay for, you want to pay for maybe 100 packs of uh, um, Prastamo or 100 um, packs of Zentel or maybe um, 100 packs of water That's or exactly. even if it is mm. 10 packs of water. Uh, let, let's start with the FCT. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Do we have an avenue? We, we have, we, like you know, community pharmacies is, uh, is a, a, a public place. You don't need to fill a form before you come to a pharmacy, a community pharmacy. Even to see the community, I mean, a pharmacist at the community pharmacy, you don't need any uh, protocol okay. to assess. That is why we said we are the easily assessed health professional. So in doing that, we our doors are open. If there are individuals that are willing to do that, we have our secretariat at uh, Life Camp. You can always come there to bring the come up and meet with us. And we can always accept that and partner with such individual. Then we'll go out and do that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, is I, it I, just at I life just, camp? I event? just want to add. Okay. Good enough. You have the chairman of ACP and FCT uh, yeah. on the program. Mm. So if you also want to assist to get to our audience, mm. to let them know that if they want to partner with us to assist in how we can get uh, um, improve the involvement or improve uh, acceptability of uh, vaccines or in any way we can get involved in improving our primary health care system they can reach our fct chairman okay so he will leave his number with you of course so you know how to reach the audience on that 
And of course, I'm also in FCT. I'm practicing here. Okay. So my number can be an, alter an alternative uh, okay. number. So okay. aside walking into a pharmacy outlet that they are used to and talking to them, even if to walk into any pharmacy outlet, the person should be able to direct them to our secretariat. Okay. And if they don't want to walk into it, they can call. always call and then we assist them on how they can get to us. Well, uh, uh, Nigerians, we are very good people. We are kind-hearted. Mm. Irrespective of our race, levels of our religious, our differences, we are united when it comes to seeing the good in others. So I want to encourage well-meaning Nigerians, you've seen the good works our pharmacists are doing in this country. So if you want to support what they are doing, please, um, we'll, we'll definitely um, put up the address of the secretariat here in Abuja. We'll put it up for you to, you know, be able to reach them or also the contact on how to reach both of them believe me whatever you're giving is safe yes i say it with my full chest mm -hmm. it is safe it will be utilized you know the right and the proper way the reason why you give will be definitely achieved so feel free to make even as small as um Five thousand, a thousand naira, mm. it will go a long way. Even five hundred naira. You you had her. Even mm. five hundred naira will go a long way. You know to put a smile on someone's face. So let's bring out the Nigerian spirit in yeah. us, and you know put our hands together to say uh, um, a full stop to all these little little diseases and infections that can be you know taken care of by vaccines. So now let's let let me talk about the 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 um kind of person who should you know uh, administer vaccines to patients is it strictly those who are pharmacists who studied pharmacy or anybody hmm. do you have a particular kind of person who can administer not, who is certified not anybody okay so please tell us <laughs> who is certified to who is licensed to Any administer qualified health professional like the doctors, the pharmacists, the nurses, the CHU. CHU are community health uh, extension workers. So any of these um, qualified and certified health workers can administer vaccines. Apart from that, no, because we, of course we know <coughs> the way the way we have apprentices in other jobs. Mm. We also have apprentices in them. Um, in um, pharmacies, uh, when you go to some pharmaceutical um, shops, or pharma they, Premise. they just, so mm. they, they, pharmaceutical premises. premises, yes. What we have see... in pharmacies are pharmacy technicians. Sure. Okay, are they also or, licensed? No, pharmacy technicians are licensed. Mm -hmm. but they are now they are under the Pharmacy, pharmacy Council, Council of Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay, so it's also a regulated uh, part of. Uh, um, that's um, they work under the pharmacist and they are licensed by the pharmacy council of nigeria so we have um, pharmacy technicians we have sales personnel but we do not we do not not what you call apprentice mm. we do not do apprenticeship in pharmacy okay so anybody that has come to you with a certificate of apprenticeship from a pharmacist is not is not recognized and it is illegal because there's no apprenticeship in pharmacy Maybe you can talk of uh, the Eastern system of apprenticeship where they have patent uh, medicine uh, vendors also training some, but not in organized setting, register their pharmacy. Okay. That is not, it is illegal. We don't do it and we don't recognize it. Okay. Yeah. But, but it doesn't mean we don't have people who, who do this that. This is Nigeria. We of have uh, we also have apprentice doctors and nurses. You can imagine. We have apprentice uh, media men and women. Very true. So Very this true. is Nigeria. I'm not saying they don't exist. Okay. I'm only saying Those today as a spokesperson of ACPM, we don't recognize such. We don't do such. Okay, so but then are there punishments you have for such people when you catch them? When we catch them? We have our regulatory agencies, okay. the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. So when such people are brought to book and taken to the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, yes, there are means of uh, punishing such people, okay. getting them, that's bringing them to book legally. Okay. There are ways and means because the safeguarding the lives of Nigerians cannot be overemphasized. True. And that is what we are out to represent. So we don't joke with that. Our regulatory bodies don't joke with that. Not just those people, even farm, as a pharmacist. pharmacist. Even if I am found wanting in my practice, I am also legally brought to book. Okay, beautiful. So it's as bad as that. Beautiful.
Beautiful. Wait, so are, are there some vaccines we can take over the counter? No, not really. I don't think uh, vaccine is an over the counter medicine. Basically, uh, vaccines, like we said, they are kept in a very specialized condition. And it's not just an over the counter uh, drug that you just go and take. It's, there must be need for it and go through the proper way of uh, administering those vaccines to you. So they are not over the counter drugs. But you, you know, when you talk about go through the proper way, you know, go through the proper channel, <coughs> let's be realistic. This is mm. Nigeria. Sometimes going through the proper channel can be frustrating. Mm. It can be frustrating. Mm. So people mm. yeah. tend to cut corners. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm coming to you. When mm. people tend to cut corners, in that regard, you still find somebody who is willing to say, oh, come over this way, come to XYZ mm. uh, pharmacy, uh, uh, you get it. And for real, they might be getting the real thing. Yeah, but that I, is cutting corners. I think mm. uh, I know where you are going. Okay. Um, I still make reference to COVID uh, period. During that uh, vaccination, I mean COVID period when we are administering vaccine, there are individuals that will tell you that they don't want the vaccine, but give me the certificate or the uh, proof. That have taken the vaccine. That have taken the vaccine, especially those that want to travel, that have this uh, mites that they are not, don't accept uh, the vaccine. vaccine. So it happens. So to just uh, affirm what you are saying, it's, okay. it's not that it doesn't happen. But that's why we are saying, go to registered community pharmacies. Those that are under our association mm. don't go to that extent of cutting corners, cutting corners. Okay. they understand? can't even do it the documentation was so, so well done that any pharmacist that cut corners will be cut and we continued to educate our pharmacists you see this is a question of image we are now partnering with the government and we have to maintain that high level of trust mm. between we and the government between we and the um, clients so we kept on educating our people that this is the government policy and you cannot um, default. So I can hit my chest and say that did not happen in community pharmacy. And like he said, it's a no-no. Vaccines are not over-the-counter medication. However, there are few vaccines that a pharmacist without a prescription can encourage a client to take, like the flu vaccine. Maybe depending on age and you are traveling to a, a country where you think you'll be exposed and you needed to fortify your body against uh, coming down with the flu. So a pharmacist can encourage you and also administer that something like the uh, flu, flu, flu vaccines and but not the major those no. major ones. No. Okay. okay, but but then Nigerians we we beat our chest and it is true that we have some of the best brains in the world because we see Nigerians doing exploits outside of this country, even here in this country. So I now want to ask, have Nigeria been able to produce any vaccine of our own? Not at all. Well, why is that? We have the best brains. We go out there, we, we, we do it. And, you know, look at the names of those who produce vaccines. You will see our Nigerian There's names. There's something so, well, I like happening? to say. Okay. There are certain hospitals when people say, I want to go there because they have all the best machines. I tell them, machines don't work on their own. You need mm -hmm. the best machines and the best brains. True. That's the best managers mm -hmm. to manage those machines to give you the results you need. So we may have the best brains, but if we do not have the best environment, the mm -hmm. best policies, the best financing, the best everything, to make it possible to get this uh, production of vaccination in Nigeria to work. I mm. think we are still far from getting all the best we need to be able to produce vaccine. It is work in progress, but we are not there yet. So okay. as of today, maybe there is something I don't know, but as for today, as far as I'm concerned, there is, uh, as far as I know, there is no vaccine that is made in Nigeria. Okay, but, but um, as FCT chairman here yes. now, have you, you know, tried to um, talk, have a meeting, a dialogue with the government and, you know, the bodies involved to see how 
you know, they can ha give you an, an enabling environment, you know, to try to produce a vaccine. D don't you think when we produce these vaccines in our country is more economical and it will be cheaper? Don't, don't you think so? Yeah, that you are very correct. You know, uh, it's all about government policies uh, from the private sector. There's an uh, extent to which you can go. And if the will from government is not there to pursue it, you will drop all the, 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 the uh, memo, all that uh, you need to put together. It is when they drive it, and that is where the will comes in. We have uh, a government uh, uh, agency like um, NAPRI, National uh, Pharmaceutical Research Institute of Nigeria, is at Idu. That is the center where issues like this are handled, you understand? And the DG is working hard on a daily basis. But like she said, we have not come to that uh, level where we can now say that, yes, today, this is a vaccine that is produced in Nigeria. And uh, we look forward that sometime in the nearest future, some of those uh, presentations that are taken to the government, the will will be there to see that it will see the light of the day. Well, that's a wishful thinking because it's really heartbreaking. <laughs> How old is Nigeria again? And then we can't produce a single vaccine, even if it is for the flu. And yeah. then we have the best brains with me, exploits out of the country. Bit. Okay. Let me deviate a bit. We are all producing nation. Yes. How do we get our food? We import. Okay. That Sadly. You, you have your answer. Sadly so. <laughs> you have your answer, right? I agree with you 100%. <laughs> but it's so sad. It's, it's really, really sad. sad. It's so look really forward sad. to one day. Yeah, that, that one day that way. We are the private sector. We're always driving that. But <laughs> we need the willpower. But can't you, in the private sector, since you already have that, uh, you've already conceived this in your yeah. mind, can't you on your own, you know, take up this responsibility? Like he put it, we have a pharmaceutical research institute that is a center for excellence and that they are adequately prepared with the best brains as far as research is concerned. We have a NAVDAC also with the best brains. Mm. So, like he put it, it's not as if, if given the supportive enabling environment and government policies, Nigerians cannot come up with something. But we are still far from there for obvious reasons. That's why I asked you about the fuel. So the situation in our country is such that there are people who benefit from the status quo and mm. do not want it to change. True. So no matter how you try, those persons continue to work against our making progress. It's, it's quite that unfortunate. That is the unhealthy truth. It's, it's quite unfortunate. Well, we keep praying. He said one day. One day will definitely yeah. come. Okay, so, okay, I, I know I have a lot of questions for you, but then our time is fast spent, so let me just streamline to just um, maybe one or two. I, I want to know, some people think that vaccines are scams. <laughs> yes, they, they, and um, I, I've, I've been able to talk to one or two before this program. And somebody said, you know, just like you talked about the COVID vaccine, people take the uh, first, the second, and they still come down with COVID. So uh, I don't know, L maybe you, you have something to say to those people who feel vaccines are scam because, of, okay, after taking the vaccine for flu, somehow, somehow, you might end up having flu. Mm -hmm. so, I think it's ignorance that make them think that because they took COVID vaccine and came down with COVID, it is scan. It is not scan. Okay. In the course of this program, we have interacted for some time mm -hmm. and at no point did my colleague or myself mention that when you take vaccinated, vaccine, vaccine, when you get vaccinated, you don't fall ill. What we continued to hammer on is it reduces the severity. True. So for those people who think it is scam because they took COVID vaccine and they got ill, God forbid, perhaps they would have been dead if, if they, they didn't. Had it, didn't take it. Okay. So that's the truth. It reduces okay. the severity of the disease when you eventually get infected. It also reduces the rate of infection from person to person. Okay. 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 So and that is clear. what makes vaccination very important. Okay. It's, it's, it's like if, if on, the, on a grade of uh, 1 to 10, if without the vaccination, your ailments will be graded as 10. 
now that you got vaccinated and you got ill maybe you are at the level of five or maybe so four. exactly so i think that's a lot of benefit yeah. why people should be encouraged to get vaccinated so I, I think more orientation should be given out to uh, people out there the fact that you are vaccinated doesn't mean you can't come down you know with but the severity that's yeah. what they've been trying to point at mm. the severity compared to somebody who was not vaccinated of course the, the difference is clear so please don't think vaccination is scam it is not scam so let me let me ask you one question yeah. before i take your last words um how come we're having vaccines for polio we're having for you know typhoid and cholera and all of that but we don't have for those uh we call them big sicknesses like cancer hiv you know how come we don't have vaccines for them or do we have and then it hasn't come to nigeria yet yeah i think uh, it's all about science you understand uh, you may also may ask why don't we have uh, vaccine against uh, hypertension or, mm. or, or even death, death. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's all about science and uh, science is evolving every day True. you understand uh, some of the vaccines that we have today did not just start one day it has science keep on evolving it keep on coming up with different vaccines as the day goes by so it's not a a, a one day thing it's a, a work in progress and uh, who says before there was no malaria vaccines but today we are talking about malaria vaccines mm -hmm. you understand so it's the work in progress that brings about those vaccines and science is a continuous uh, but, but do we are there are there uh, um works to get this vaccine especially for cancer a whole lot we of vaccines the are there works HPV. like hpv this is a, a kind of cancer it wasn't there yeah. but now we yeah. have cervical, uh, cervical cancer. cancer there's vaccination vaccine for already. Right now. okay yeah okay Okay, so um, it, we've spent a whole lot of time. I think we, I, I wish we could take more, but then we, we have to go. So let me get your final words with regards to what we just discussed. Your final words to our viewers out there. All right. I, in the course of this uh, program, I said prevention is better than cure. And uh, we encourage our citizens as much as possible any disease condition that has vaccines please feel free to take get vaccinated because when you get vaccinated it's go a long way to reduce the risk that may be associated with you contacting that disease have been issue okay. so we encourage every individual to go for vaccination okay thank you thank you thank you very much and let me get your final words Thomas is Bridget. <laughs> yes like my colleague put it vaccine is not a scam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and uh, it is needed by you by me by our parents by everybody in the world so my last word get vaccinated get vaccinated get vaccinated get vaccinated, get vaccinated. <laughs> thank okay you. thank you very much <laughs> um, um the two great pharmacists the two mm -hmm. great brains that came to grace our studio this uh, today thank you very much thank we you. really appreciate and it's then we'll keep calling you thank you know you. for, for you. more education and then uh viewers you had them get vaccinated get vaccinated get vaccinated the truth is vaccination stands as a beacon of of hope in the perpetual quest for human well-being illuminating a path towards a future where the ravages of infectious diseases are relegated to the annals of history as we continue to navigate the complexities of an ever-evolving global health landscape the significance of vaccination remains unvocal a testament to human ingenuity scientific progress and our collective pursuit of a healthier more resilient world it's very possible it is achievable by embracing the power of vaccines we not only safeguard our own lives but also contribute to a broader tapestry of immunity protecting generations to come and cementing the indelible mark of vaccination as a cornerstone of human health well, viewers, until we come your way again next time with another very interesting episode, please do well to get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. And don't just stop at getting vaccinated. Also spread the knowledge you have just acquired here. So, bye for now.